I want to talk to us real quick on the topic, the subject, the title, uh, Hurt for Good. Hurt for Good. Somebody say hurt. Hurt. For good. good. Now put it all together and say hurt for good. Listen, we can hurt for good. See, you and I, we, we have opportunities. We can either hurt for good. Somebody go like that, like law. We, we can hurt for good, which is over here. <laughs> or we can hurt for good. See, we, we, can, we can be hurt and, and have that hurt carry with us and go along with us for the rest of our lives. And we can stand there and be hurt for good. Or we can be hurt and allow God to take that hurt and turn it around for our good and for his glory. The difference today is in the choosing. What do we choose to do with the hurt today? After today, do we choose to hang on to the hurt because it feels comfortable and it feels good? Do we carry that hurt on with us in every relationship, in every circumstance, in everything that we do? Or do we decide today to allow God to get into the situation and turn that hurt around and it actually work for our good? Did you know God wants to do that today? Yeah. Listen, yeah. More, more than you want God to do that today for you, God wants to do that today for you more than you want it to be done. Yeah. Why? Because God knows you. He knows the purpose and the plan. He knows the giftings that he gave to you. Even when you were in your mother's womb, God was knitting you together and forming you and shaping you. And in those times, listen to me, God had a plan for your future. And then hell came around and hijacked that plan. The devil, the world, the devil in your flesh came around and said, oh, that's a God plan. I want to mess that up. And so we were all born into sin and we have this sin nature and that thing gets in the way of us walking and living for God. But even for us Christians, the enemy still has a goal to take hurts from your past and he wants those hurts to wreck our future. Somebody say hurt. hurt. Now, has anybody ever been hurt before? Raise your hand. If you've never been hurt before, go ahead, don't raise your hand. But has anybody been I didn't get 100% participation, so we're either, I don't know if we turned it into a Presbyterian church or what. But So give a Pentecostal hand raise or a Presbyterian shout. Woo! <laughs> I like Presbyterians. I have Presbyterian friends. I'm just saying. All right? We've, listen, we've all been hurt before. I remember met, uh, quite a few years ago now, I was doing a ministry for young, for young adults. And uh, we were at a buddy's house, and he had like 90 acres in multiple fields. And uh, in one field, way over here, we had a bonfire that was set up. And I learned real fast, don't let Chris head up the bonfire committee. Because <laughs> uh, he had these like 30-foot cedar planks and put them in the teepee shape. And I'll tell you, at night, it no longer is night once they're lit. It's like, woof, towns from all around can see it. Well, that was one field. In another field, I, we had put together an entire paintball fighting course paintball shooting course. So if anybody's ever done paintball, it's fun. If you've never done paintball and you're like, what are you talking about? It's a game where you have a paintball gun. Instead of shooting bullets or something, it shoots paintballs and it's harmless unless you get hit in the lip. <laughs> oh, which really, which reminds me to tell you guys, you might, you might see someone here today that looks a lot like me, just not quite as handsome. Um, and that is my brother and his wife and his family. They're here today. And uh, he got the short end of the stick with the looks, but hey, whatever. I've got the mic. I'll say what I want. And, and it reminded me because we were playing paintball one time as kids. And, and of course, we had the cool masks and the, there wasn't enough. So we gave him the old four-wheeler helmet and it had scratches all over the front. So he had to lift the visor in order to see anybody. <laughs> and we're like, Billy, don't open the visor. And he opened the visor and me, a sharpshooter, got him right in the lip. We made up a story with my dad that he ran into a tree or something. He, he smiles. He's got paint in his teeth and everything. And oh yeah, my dad didn't believe me. So anyway, back to the important story. So we, we set up this paintball course, and, and I'm starting to see over in the other field how huge this bonfire is starting to get. The, the, the building of it, I'm like, okay, that's not good. So I'm, I'm running. I run from where I was to the other field. Well, in the meantime, I'm running, and there's a huge hole in the ground that I don't see. And when I stepped in it, my ankle goes pop and I, it just snapped, and I rolled, and I rolled over. 
And the only thing that was going through my mind as I was rolling over wasn't the excruciating pain running through my ankle at the moment. It was how ridiculous I must have looked <laughs> running in the field and then all of a sudden going down. It probably looked like I got taken out or something. And so I roll. And as I'm getting up, I just I stand to my feet and immediately look around to see if anybody saw me. <laughs> Has anybody ever done that? Like you fall upstairs or something and you're like, Oh, it's, uh, it's uh, just a flesh wound. <laughs> no, no, nothing to see here, folks. Just move on. Well, it was in so much pain, and I did what any man would do in my situation. I tightened that shoe up as tight as I possibly could, made it, you know, because I knew if I didn't tighten it down, it was going to blow up, and I carried on with my day. I just did what I needed to do, because that's what we do sometimes. Well, uh, that, that's what we do when we get hurt, isn't it? When we get hurt, what we do, we just tighten that thing up, walk it off, right? That's what we're taught to do. And, and that somehow gets into our Christian walk too, by the way. See, what, something interesting that happened with my ankle was, man, after I hurt my ankle, and I, it made me walk a little funny. And after about a week, my left knee started hurting me. And then my lower back started, started hurting me. Because sometimes, listen to me, sometimes when you get hurt in one area, it affects other areas. And see, sometimes what we're talking about here is, yeah, when you get a hurt in real life, in, in the physical, it hurts in other areas. But it's even more true in the spiritual. When you get a wounded spirit, when you get hurt in one area of your life, it is going to affect other areas of your life. And right now today, it's very possible that I'm talking to a group of people that you look beautiful and wonderful and handsome and great on the outside, but maybe on the inside, you have some kind of wound right in there. Something maybe you've been carrying a long time. Maybe something that every once in a while rears its ugly head. And, and you thought you got over it. You thought you forgave it, but it just comes right back again. And I'm telling you, it's dangerous to walk around with a spiritual wound. With a wounded spirit, it's dangerous. It's dangerous. Why? Because just like an ankle can affect other parts, it, that wounded spirit can start affecting every other area of your life. And that's why, folks, God is here today and he wants to help us with a wounded spirit. Now listen to me, just because you don't have a wounded spirit does not mean that you don't need this message today. If you want to continue to go through life without that, because look, if the enemy could do one thing in this church, it's to, it, it would be to get some people to all of a sudden be wounded and then carry that wound and destroy the work that God wants to do. But I don't know about you, but I'm not willing to let the enemy do that. Can I get an amen? Amen. Too much, listen, God's do, God has done too much in and through this church to let that happen. And so in order for us to grow healthy, like it's wonderful having two services. It's wonderful to have, uh, you know, so many people in the second service. It's, it's, it's fabulous. But guess what? I, it means nothing if we don't deal with potential hurts and wounds. If we don't grow healthy, we're going to be really stunted. I want you to look at with, with me uh, Proverbs chapter 18, verse 14. This, the Bible says this. If you don't have your Bibles, I have it on the screen for you. The Bible says, the spirit of a man will sustain his infirmity. But a wounded spirit, who can bear? But a wound, somebody say wounded. wounded. A wounded spirit, who can bear? I believe the Lord is here today to help deal with some of these wounded spirits. So, someone's wounded spirit, I should say. And uh, I know a guy who, you know, a broken body is hard to deal with. If, if you've ever been in a situation where you've had a knee surgery or something that, you know, you needed crutches for, it can be difficult to deal with. Uh, I know a guy who, he's been in a wheelchair for years and years. And yet something about him, he wants to serve God. He wants to see God's plan fulfilled in his life. He, he, he trusts the Lord. He's, see, he sees the Lord work in his life and through his life all the time. And, and, and one would think, man, his body is broken. But here's what we understand. He has a healthy spirit. See, uh, a, a healthy spirit, listen to me, a healthy spirit can take a paralyzed body and make it mobile. But what a, wounded, a wounded spirit can take a mobile body and make it paralyzed. I don't know if everybody got that, so I'm going to say, uh, uh, a healthy spirit can take someone that you could be paralyzed in the natural, but in, in the supernatural, you, you can have, you can be mobile. You can make things happen for the Lord. You can go from A to B to C to D and the purposes that God has for you. But if you have a wounded spirit, you could have a completely healthy body, and yet 
struggle and be paralyzed and not be and someone maybe you're here today and you've maybe you didn't know it was a wounded spirit but you've always had this sense like man I just know that God has something for me right there but I can't move from this spot that I'm in I'm stuck tell you if you if you feel stuck today maybe the first thing we need to recognize maybe that's connected to a wound that you received and maybe today is the healing that you need for that wound to go forward and so this is going to be a two-part series, folks. Today I'm going to talk about, there, there's one thing we need to do today that the Lord showed me that we need to do together uh, to move forward. And then next week I'm going to talk about, uh, I'm going to preach a message that's going to really deal with certain keys that we need to, in order to walk in the goodness of God and have God turn that around for our good. But for today, I just want to camp out and give a little bit of a warning. Give some, uh, not, and not just a warning, but bring some insight to help you see if maybe you have a wounded spirit or maybe a loved one does. Because I believe God wants to equip some people. Because not every person in this room is wounded, by the way. If you're sitting there and you're like, well, man, maybe I'm wounded. <laughs> like, I thought I was fine. I thought I forgave everybody. I thought I was good. But now, like, maybe I'm not. No, I don't, want, I don't want to build that into you today. But I want to equip you so that if you do have that wounded spirit, God can help you. Or maybe you have a family member or a loved one or someone that you know has that. This might be able to help you lead them into victory. Can I get an amen? All right, so listen, the, uh, Saul immediately jumps out at me from the Bible of someone that has a wounded spirit. King Saul, the first king of Israel. Now, Saul, what Saul dealt with, I think, you know when I thought, I think Saul first got wounded? I think Saul first got wounded when, he refused, when David refused to wear his armor. I'm letting you think about that for a second. If you're new to church... Saul is the king of Israel, and David is this young shepherd boy who God called to be king. And David, this young man, hears about this giant, literal giant, Goliath, that's tormenting Israel. Because back in those days, instead of having both armies just collide and fight and be mass, ca mass casualties, they'd take a champion from one uh, army and a champion from another army, and they'd duke it out. It'd be like a video game ch competition, except in real life. Like, who, who could win? And then whichever warrior won, that, so that army won the battle. And so here's Goliath. Goliath is the Philistines champion. And, and they, the Israel didn't have a champion because everybody was scared. Everybody was afraid. Everybody was paralyzed by fear. And so here comes David. David is like, man, I've killed a bear. I've killed a lion. I've done great by the power of God coming over me. I did great things. Like what is, go, what is wrong with these people? In other words, is what it says in the original language. <laughs> What's wrong with these folk? What's going on here? And so David goes up and Saul, he sees David, hey, take my armor. And now Saul was like six foot eight and David probably wasn't even close to that. And, and so he's trying to wear Saul's armor and finally comes to the decision. I can't fight this battle the way that he wants me to fight it. See, and just a side note, like squirrel moment, you can't fight your battles the way everybody else would fight them. You need the wisdom of God to fight your battles. All right, back to the message. <laughs> so David says, I can't do it. I have to do it on my own. M on my own. I believe at that moment, Saul got hurt. He experienced a little bit of rejection. I, I think some of the things that went through Saul's mind, well, what's wrong with my way? What's wrong with the way that I do it? Why, why won't you take my armor onto the battlefield? Do, do you not want to represent me? See, I bet, I bet that those are all the things Saul was thinking. You don't want to represent me? Is that what you're trying to say? Are you trying to set up your own kingdom? Those are, that, those are just the seeds that were planted in Saul's heart. And then you go a little further in the Bible, and then David does great exploits. He becomes a warrior and does all kinds of amazing things. And there begins to be some songs sung. The ladies start singing, and you've got to understand it was a warrior, not a warrior, a warrior culture then. And being a battlefield hero meant a lot. And so the women started singing, Saul kills his thousands, but David kills his ten thousands. Saul kills his thousands, but David kills his ten thousands. All of a sudden, see what happened in Saul's life is that tipped him over the edge. Saul had a wound, and Saul had a hurt, but it tipped him over the edge to having a wounded spirit. And from that day forward, listen to me, from that day forward, Saul was hurt for good. 
No turning back, no, no, no going back to the way things were. Saul was hurt for good. And, and, and from that moment forward, he was hell-bent on destroying David, killing David. What, what Saul should have been was an encourager and a mentor and someone that lifted him up. But instead, Saul was out to get David. And so from this story and other stories in the Bible, I, I want to extract some things that we can be aware of today. That we can watch out, listen, we can watch out in our, for our own lives, but we can also be aware for those that are around us. A wounded spirit is dangerous. Somebody say, it's da the, a wounded spirit is dangerous. Say dangerous. Dangerous. All right, you seem very, I like an intimidating crowd. It makes me preach better. <laughs> Look, it's dangerous because a wounded spirit will destroy you. A wounded spirit will destroy you. That's the goal. The enemy has a goal with the wounded spirit, and it is to destroy you. Walking around with a wounded spirit is kind of like driving tired. Anybody ever drive tired before? You know, you're going down the road, highway, you're on a long trip, and then all of a sudden, like, you kind of like, your eyes are open, but you kind of wake up, and you realize you went 20 miles. You're like, whoa, where, where am I? Like, whoa, that's a, we went 20 exits, and I, I fogged out. I, I, I faded out. You, you turn the window down, you stick your head out the window, and you're trying to get air on you, and you're like, you know, you drink Red Bull or whatever. You put the AC on, and you just try to blast yourself, get, get uh, you know, the, the cold air waking you up. And if you're all by yourself and there's nobody around you, just slap yourself real hard. <laughs> if you've got a really good wife and she has a little bit of an offense, she's, you, hey, honey. <laughs> oh, good, I'm, I'm good now. <laughs> Y'all pretend that does never happen in your home. I mean, on the road. <laughs> See, walking with a wounded spirit is like that. See, the, driving tired, there's been tests done. Driving tired is as dangerous as it is drunk driving. It, it messes up your inhibitions. It, it, your your decision-making, the timing of your decision-making is slowed down. You, you can't, you're impaired. I'm telling you, if we, we walk around with a wounded spirit, we walk around impaired. And the same thing that we should do, uh, the same thing that we should do if we have, if we're tired, you know, we should pull over to the side of the road, right, and take a rest. The same thing, if, if we have a wounded spirit, it's probably a really good idea to just pull over to the side of the road and take a break. Stop where you're at. Don't, don't keep trying to push forward. Deal with the wounded spirit. Allow the Holy Spirit to come in. and instead of, Get a rest. Get some peace. Get, get some help today. Don't keep on going forward and pushing on and just trying to be tough. Because what that will do is it will break you. Deal with it. Pull over to the side of the road and, and seek the Lord. Say, God, I, th these things that were preached today, and I already know coming in, I got a wounded spirit. You know, maybe you're thinking that right now. Look, allow the Holy Spirit to help you with that today. Just pull over to the side of the road and allow the Lord to minister to you. Allow the Lord to give you peace, give you strength. Allow the Lord to help you forgive. Somebody say forgive. 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 And so the first thing that we need to know is that the enemy is out to destroy and he'll use anything to cause that wounded spirit. Because we, a wounded spirit will get in there just like Saul. The, 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 the hurt that had Saul didn't really show its head and really try to manifest itself until later on in Saul's life. A few, uh, a little while later in the Bible story. And so the same way is, man, the devil will get a hurt inside of you. And you'll be fine. You'll function well at work. You'll do great in church. You'll raise your hand at church. You'll, you'll do all the things that you're supposed to do. But all of a sudden, over some time, that thing just kind of brews and, and manifests itself. And at, the, at just the right time, the enemy will capitalize to try to destroy you. That's heavy. That's deep. But I've got great news for you today. You're here because God wants to help you with this today. Or God wants to help someone you know get free from this wounded spirit in Jesus' name. All right, now it's not going to get any easier for just a second. <laughs> like you thought that was pretty heavy. Just wait for this next point. As I'm preparing this message, uh, I, I was like, okay, Lord, all right, there's no, all right. I'll just keep digging. And that's what, what, that's what we're here to do today. We're here to dig. We're here to dig. We're here to root some things out because God has a plan and a purpose for our life. And so the second thing we need to know about walking with a wounded spirit is that it repels the right people and attracts the wrong people. It repels the right people and it attracts the wrong people. See, we can't help but wear our emotions on our sleeves sometimes. See, we, we wear our wounds on our sleeves. And, and, and I'm going to tell you right now, a hurt and a wounded spirit is like, 
it is like DEET to a mosquito for, for healthy people. So uh, a wounded spirit acts like DEET for that healthy person. It, it, what de- if you don't know what DEET is, it's, so bug spray sometimes has DEET in it. If, it. if bug spray doesn't have DEET in it, it's not working. <laughs> Just let, if it has a bunch of warning labels on your bug spray, like don't use, well, if you don't want mosquitoes, use it. Now, I'm not giving medical advice because I'm not a doctor. <laughs> but I use a lot of DEET <laughs> because it works. And I'm, I'm just going to tell somebody right now, when, when we wear our wound on our sleeves and we walk around wounded, it will repel healthy, right people. But it will act like a lure for unhealthy people. I'm like, in my head right now, I'm not, I, I know where I'm going. I'm just praying, Lord, should I go there? <laughs> Can, can I keep on going? Can I go a little further? I heard go, it sounded like no, but I'm, I, it might have been no, but I'm taking it as go. <laughs> so we get, we get hurt and we get in a situation and we're like, all the healthy people left me, my, my true friends left me, and now I'm hurt, and now the really healthy people are in my life. Now the people that are there to help, I'm so thankful that they're in my life. I just, I want to caution us. There are people that will capitalize on your pain that might not be healthy for you. Hurt is like a lure to unhealthy people. They can, it's, like, it's like blood in the water to a shark. They can sniff it, they can smell it, and they're gonna be knocking on your door. And so, now I'm not trying to scare anybody. I'm trying to give, I'm try, my job as a pastor is to empower and to equip the saints for the work of the ministry. And I want to equip some people today to understand and recognize that, man, you need to be able to recognize if you're releasing some blood in the water. We need to be able to identify if there's a shark that's trying to, to nibble on us or not. Because uh, we need healthy people. But here's what I would encourage you to do. Pray. Don't just accept every person that comes into your life, especially in a time of crisis, a time of need, and a time of hurt. Pray, God, is this per- does this person really want what's best for me? And here's the biggest litmus test for some people is go ahead and get healthy and see if that person stays in your life. Woo! I'm going to pat my... My arms are too short to pat myself on the back right now, so <laughs> I'm not sure how to do that. This jacket's too tight. I'm, I must be working out. My jacket's too tight. <laughs> eating too much cake. (laughs) But listen, just because they show up at the opportune time might not be the opportune time for you. And so, what do we need to do? We need to pray. We also need to seek those whom we know that we can trust. God has somebody in your life. Maybe it's a pastor. Maybe it's a small group leader. Maybe it's your team leader. Maybe it's somebody that you've built a relationship before the hurt ever came around, and they've spoken truth to you in times past, and you've seen how they've handled other people's stuff. You know they've heard about other people's things, but they've never talked to you about it. Hmm. That's a good sign that that's a healthy person. That's a good sign that they could be how they could hold things confidential. And so what we need to do, now I know a lot of people, the way, just the look that you have right now, you're like, wait a minute, that doesn't sound very Christian. I thought we were supposed to bear one another's burdens. And you are right, we are called to bear one another's burdens, but we're not called to help people hold on to hurt. And so people in our lives, if they're not helping us overcome our hurt and have forgiveness, then they're helping us be ingrained in the hurt. That's not the right person. Now, that doesn't mean they're a bad person. That doesn't mean they're an evil person. It doesn't make them the devil. But it just might mean that they're not the person that God's going to use to help you overcome what it is that you have to overcome. Can I get an amen? Amen. amen. And, and listen, if, listen, I hope, I hope, I hope. And I hope this because I would hope that I would respond to this if I were you. If as I'm sharing this stuff and you're like, oh, shoot, I think I'm the shark. I think, I rec- I think I'm attracted to that hurt and, and I just, I have to go after the hurt all the time. And, and it's always hurt that I'm going after. Look, this is not a word of condemnation for you. In fact, I'm going to tell you, God has given you incredible empathy and God has given you incredible gifts to, to have compassion with people. But what we have to do is allow the Holy Spirit to curb that energy and that effort to be led by the Holy Spirit to be healthy. Can I get an amen? Yes. 
I know this is like drinking from a fire hydrant right now because as I'm sharing this, I'm like, oh man, I'd want to take notes. But, but the Holy Spirit is here today because he wants some people to get healthy. Healthier than you've ever been healthy before. All right, there's one more. <laughs> it's getting deeper. Look, a wounded spirit needs confirmation and affirmation to stay wounded. It needs confirmation and validation to stay wounded. It go, this actually goes with that second point, but the second point was kind of too heavy, so I, I just break them apart and make them two separate points. But this is really all part of the same point. A wounded spirit needs confirmation and validation to stay wounded. Look what Proverbs, real quick, Proverbs chapter uh, 29, verse 11 says. It says, a fool. Someone say fool. fool. Say, I pity the fool. All right, we're going to try that again. You guys aren't supposed to laugh at that. So some say, I pity the fool. All right. A fool gives full vent to his spirit, but a wise man quietly holds it back. I like how the New King James Version puts it. It says it this way. A fool vents all his feelings, but a wise man holds them back. Now, every woman in the place right now is like, oh, thank God it's not applying to me. Talking about a man right there. <laughs> Folks, that means people in this context. It means everybody. And, and, and I, I just want to say, the enemy loves it when we can't stop talking about it. The enemy loves it when we can't stop talking about it. Every time we get into a new relationship or a new acquaintance or a new this, new that, and it just pours out of us and, and we just have to share our stuff. We have to, everybody, everybody that has had an it at one point in your life, go ahead and raise your hand. An it. An it. Maybe you don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Something that hurt you. Let's try that again. <laughs> if you ever had anything, that's your it. Whatever it was that hurt you. That's the it. Everybody has an it. And if every conversation you end up going back to that it, we have a wounded, problem, wounded spirit problem. Again, it, it doesn't make you bad or evil or, or beyond hope. In fact, actually, it makes you a candidate to receive the hope of Jesus Christ today. Amen. And well, maybe, you're, well, I'm a, I'm a Christian already. It means that you have the hope of receiving the power of the Holy Spirit to bring healing and hope to your life. Worship team, if you come on up, I'm going to skip a few things because I really feel the Lord wants me to just kind of pinpoint this right here. So as the worship team comes up, I'm going to delay by talking for just a moment to give them a chance to get up here. And as they get up here, our focus is going to come right back here. All right. <laughs> Good. Check this out. I wonder, and I want you to wonder with me for just a moment. I know we can't, we, none of us can go back and change the past, but sometimes looking at the past and seeing what maybe an alternative uh, reality might have been, it might help us in decision making in the future. So I, I look at Saul and I wonder, like what if Saul didn't allow that hurt to become a spiritual wound? I want you to wonder with me. I want you to think about that for a second. What if Saul didn't do that? What if in that moment Saul was like, whoa, wait a minute. Samuel, I need an appointment with you because I got some bitterness inside of me. I got some things going on in the inside of me. I want to kill this dude. And, and so what, what if Saul, Saul went that route and Samuel was just like, hey, Pastor Vinny has this message on spiritual wounds. Go listen to it on YouTube or Facebook. And then he listens to it and God just does this miracle in his life. And now Saul, instead of being wounded and hurt, he now is healthy. And now I want you to imagine. Imagine now, all of a sudden, now Saul's pouring into David. Saul's almost like a father figure raising up the next generation, raising up the next king of Israel. And imagine all of a sudden now the ladies come around and they say, Saul kills his thousands and David kills his ten thousands. See, it, what really tipped him over the edge before, imagine if all of a sudden he heard that but he was healthy and all of a sudden the king of Israel began to sing that song too. Woo, I've got holy ghost bumps right now. Because we're going to flip it on the devil today. Imagine if Saul just began to say, hey, I love that song. Hey, Saul, me, I kill my thousands, but David kills his ten thousands. Look at the mighty warrior that God turned him to be. Look, this guy was in a shepherd's field. He was a nobody, nothing going nowhere. But look what God did in his life. Uh, well, if God can do that for him, imagine what God could do for you. I just picture, what would the story have changed? If David still would have been king, but Saul would have went down in history a whole lot different than the way he went down in history. I don't know about you, but I don't want to be a Saul. Right. Whew. Help me. 
I, I don't want to be a Saul. I, I, I want to be a David. Yes. I don't want to be a Saul. I want to be an encourager. And see, that's the, uh, uh, that's, the, that's the alternative to Saul. So you can either be Saul or you can be an encourager, but you can't be both. And we need to come to a place where our wounds don't affect every other area of our life. See, God, there's people in here today that God has an immense calling and purpose on your life. A calling to be an encourager, a calling to be a change maker, a calling to be a difference maker in somebody else. But because there was a wound, a hurt, and, and listen, folks, there's no hurt like a church hurt. I feel like I could make a song, a, a, a hip hop song out of that. Ain't no hurt like a church hurt. And it's the truth. Some of the most painful things people experience are in church. Now, some of it's completely bogus on the surface. It's like, oh, really, the pastor corrected you. Which, by the way, some, anytime you people, like, post, you people, like, that's an encouraging thing. <laughs> like, Christians, people, the humankind. Anytime some post things like, uh, oh, what was that that I saw recently? One of you posted this. And it's like, just because the pastor corrects you doesn't mean you need to leave the church. Like me as a pastor, it's a little weird for me to post things like that, but I love it when you guys post stuff like that. It's so awesome. I'm like, I like that. I'll like that. I'll share it. Come on. You want to get me to share something of yours? Post something like that. And some church hurt is just really, you, really what a lot of church hurt is, hurt is people just want to continue living in their sin. And they got confronted on it. And maybe it was confronted the wrong way. And, it, and it's so sad that we as pastors have to have like, uh, like these, these training sessions on how to appropriately address a, a failure in somebody. Man, I, I love it when someone can just come up to me and be like, you're messed up right here. Let's fix that. Can we get back to a place where we can do that once again in Jesus' name? But listen, why that's a problem though and why, we actually, why I need to take the responsibility to communicate properly is because there's so many people that have been hurt legitimately. There are legitimate hurts. There are legitimate things. But there's no, le there's no such thing as a legitimate unforgiveness. Why? Why? Because if you just take a look at all that God forgave you of, we have no legitimacy in holding on to unforgiveness. So today, listen, I want to be an encourager. I, 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 want us, I don't want us to be hurt for good. I want us to be hurt for good.